Much like everyone else, I am a passionate Borderlands player. And a passionate Borderlands player like myself would like to see what other Borderlands players think of my thoughts on the games. That's why I'm sacrificing my public reputation today by getting dragged through the mud again as I state my public opinions on what I think are the coolest and best Vault Hunters in the Borderlands franchise. I'm going to be ranking all 20 of them from Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 3. And I think it's important to know that before we start, I'm not going to be talking about which are legitimately the best, the most powerful, which have the most skill interactions. I'm purely going to be going off of what I enjoy playing the most in these games and where I would put them in my own personal list. There is also going to be Vault Hunters that I just don't enjoy and don't really have a compounding huge list of reasons as to why. So if there are some where I talk about them for maybe 20 seconds and some where I talk about them for 2 minutes, you'll know why. And with that being said, let's get into a list of my ranked Vault Hunters in the Borderlands franchise from worst to best, starting with the worst. In my opinion, it is without a doubt Brick from Borderlands 1. I really, really, really do not like Brick, and since I started playing Borderlands back in 2009, I don't think I've ever completed a playthrough on Brick, and if I have, I can't say that I've done it legitimately. I find Brick to be absolutely incredibly boring. I don't think he has a fun action skill. I think he's very cookie cutter for what the character is supposed to be. I'm really not a fan of playing with rocket launchers as a whole as well, so Brick never does it for me. I've never been a massive Brick fan, even as a character, and so Brick is at my number 20 spot. Now, coming in at my number 19 spot, not far behind Brick, this dude, rest in peace, is my boy Roland. Roland is similar to Brick for me. I didn't find him all that interesting in Borderlands 1. I thought he was a cool character, but the Scorpio turret wasn't an action skill that I found fun to use. I wasn't a fan of the soldier archetype, I'm going to call it, in games in general, so that was an instant turnoff for me. And like I said with the Scorpio turret, I didn't enjoy using it in combat. I was really expecting it to be cooler than it actually was, and then when I got around to using it, I found it to be pretty lame, honestly. I didn't have fun using the Scorpio turret, I didn't think the relics made it much more fun to use either, and I mean, I can say that about basically all the action skills in BO1 with relics, but I didn't enjoy playing Roland in Borderlands 1. I have done playthroughs with Roland, but I can't say that I enjoyed them. Now, you're going to start sensing a pattern here, because in front of Roland is Lilith, from Borderlands 1, I do not enjoy Lilith that much in Borderlands 1. While I do like playing with her elemental damage and SMGs and doing like, I think I've got a build on my channel actually, the Firehawk build for Lilith. She is somewhat fun to play in Borderlands 1, but overall the reason why she is where she is at right now is because of her action skill, the Phase Walk. I find phase walking to be so boring in Borderlands 1 because when you end the phase walk, you are reminded of how slow you actually move in this game and it makes me miserable. I also hate the way Lilith feels like the ultimate way to beat Cromorax in Borderlands 1. I know that's a hot take and it's probably going to annoy a lot of people because there are ways to do crawl without Lilith, but let's face it, dog, like she can go invisible and, and super speed. And I mean, that. how is that not just the meta way to take down that boss? I, I don't enjoy it. I know that's more of a fault of Cromax than it is Lilith. But I really do feel like a large portion of the fun I have on Lilith in Borderlands 1 is when I'm using her to take down Cromax, And that's a pretty small portion of my gameplay. Now, ending off the Borderlands 1 Vault Hunters here, coming in at the spot in front of Lilith, is going to be Mordecai. Now, Mordecai isn't the most incredibly interesting Vault Hunter in the franchise and I almost feel bad for putting him where I am because I love playing Mordecai using revolvers. I find Mordecai to be very, very fun in Borderlands 1 and I feel incredibly badass using Mordecai 2 which I think is very important. But unfortunately for me the reason why he's ending up in this spot is because of the Bloodwing action skill. I really, really, really do not like the Bloodwing action skill. I find it to be insanely boring. 
unimpactful, underwhelming. I never feel like throwing out Bloodwing makes me feel cool. And I don't even think it suits what I would have for a Bloodwing action skill. I don't know why I'm throwing it out like a grenade almost and just watching it fly around like a crow. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't like Bloodwing. And uh, yeah, sadly, that's why Mordecai comes in at this spot. Now, coming in at the number 16 spot, I believe it is. We have Gage from Borderlands 2. Gage is a Vault Hunter, which I thought looked incredibly cool and exciting on paper when she was revealed in Borderlands 2. And I think Death Trap is insanely cool. However, what's really upsetting about Gage is that I unironically think it would be more fun if Death Trap was just the Vault Hunter instead, and I got to play as a floating robot. I know that's going to sound a little silly for some people, but that's what I genuinely feel about Gage. I find this character to be so incredibly boring, and outside of Anarchy, which is her whole entire gimmick, there's nothing else to me which stands out on Gage. Yes, there are other things you can do with her build-wise, but for the most part, you're there for Anarchy if you're playing Gage, and Anarchy stacking can be boring and tedious, and if you don't have Anarchy, you're basically screwed in a lot of activities too. So I'm really sorry, Gage, but this is where you will sit for now. And not far behind Gage, this is going to set off the comment section war, is Krieg. I am sorry if you enjoy Krieg, and I am sorry you don't have better taste. I hate playing Krieg. Krieg is an absolute snooze fest, and while Blood Splosion, which I know is going to be brought up as the main compounding argument here, is fun to play, the rest of Krieg, I've got to say, is not. And here is the biggest reason for it. I don't think the gimmick of playing a psycho in Borderlands is as remotely interesting as people make it out to be. I want to kill psychos. I don't want to be a psycho. I'm sorry, I know that's probably going to keep you guys up at night. That will probably generate another four videos on me trying to smear my name for defacing Krieg, but that is really how I feel about this Vault Hunter. I don't enjoy Krieg, and I'm really glad if you do. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm sorry if you do. Now, moving on, in front of Krieg, who I actually think is more fun than Krieg, is Axton from Borderlands 2. I used to be a number one Axton hater until eventually I listened to my gut instinct and went back to play Axton and I actually had a blast. Axton, you would have been right where Krieg was had I not gone back and played you, probably even lower on the list, honestly. But I gotta say, I really love Axton. I love playing with ARs on Axton. I love Axton's turrets. I love the way you can augment those turrets. I think Axton is very, very cool. And the only reason why Axton isn't higher on the list is because I feel like compared to the other ones we're going to be talking about, he's a little more cookie cutter here. But I really love Axton. So uh, yeah, GG Axton, man. You've, you've, uh, you've really changed my opinion on you. Now, in front of Axton, we have Claptrap the Frag Trap from Borderlands the pre-sequel. The only reason I have Claptrap where he is is because I really do feel as though Claptrap is a little bit too gimmicky and a little bit too random for what I want. The Vault Hunter EXE action skill is insanely cool and there are so many powerful action skills within it which are really fun also. But I am not really a big fan of the whole like randomized action skill feature. It's almost like taking the gimmick of a glitch weapon and applying it here. And it just doesn't really do it for me personally. I really do like the attention to detail on Claptrap though with like not having any oxygen depletion. I think that's really cool. And also just the size of Claptrap is really sick. But yeah, sadly Claptrap, you did not make it higher on the list. But you are actually very fun to play. Now, next up, we have Flak from Borderlands 3. I know this is going to be a shock pick for a lot of people, but there is a very good reason why I have Flak where I've got them. The reason why I have got Flak where I've got them on this list currently is because I am not very good at playing Flak, and I don't really understand how to build Flak. Now, yes, I've made some very powerful Flak builds in the past, but I'm talking about casual play when I'm not going out of my way to do crazy theory and build crafting. I never feel like I'm happy with where I'm at playing Flak, and for me, that prevents me having Flak higher on the list. I want to feel confident playing a Vault Hunter, knowing that I've got something I'm happy with and proud of, and I just don't feel that way on Flak. 
Additionally, I don't enjoy flax action skills as much as I should. Um, not even referring to purple tree, which that's a case of its own and probably is a warrant to have flak where they are on this list. The purple tree is obviously a very massive criminal offense for flak. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. For me, it's just I never feel truly happy playing flak, which is a shame because I think flak looks so sick. But yeah, sadly, this is where flak goes and it's time to continue upsetting people because next on the list in front of flak, I have got Amara from Borderlands 3. Now, I know that all of you fake gamers out there who like the fake grasp and ties that bind exploit and use indiscriminate with a recursion to cheat the game are going to be up in arms at this, but I have a counterpoint. Amara is very boring. I don't find Amara to be very fun in Borderlands 3. And furthermore, I don't enjoy 90% of Amara's action skills, apart from phase lock. Now, I think phase cast is pretty cool, and I think that Amara's ball is very fun, but in terms of all of the other augments that she has, I don't enjoy them that much, and I also don't really enjoy playing Amara that much. Now, that doesn't mean I can't enjoy playing Amara, it just means that, on average, I would rather pick someone like Zane, who we will see later on in the list, as opposed to Amara. Personally, that is just how I feel about it, and I'm sure that's going to offend a lot of people, and I'm very glad that it will. Now, next on in our list, coming in at my number 10 spot, we are now in the top 10 Vault Hunters of all time for me, we have Zero. Now I know, you are thinking Zero should be way, way, way higher on this list, top 5, top 3 even, but here's my counterpoint to that. I don't really enjoy playing Zero. And when I do enjoy playing Zero, I like playing with Zero sniper builds, and I actually do think that Melee Zero is also a ton of fun as well. But I personally am not a huge fan of Zero, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that Boar is probably the most interesting thing about Zero other than Kunai, and it's basically bugged. I know I'm going to get into a war with people saying that Boar isn't bugged, it's working as intended and hitboxes are the problem. But, but come on dog, a level 1 starter pistol can kill a raid boss on Zero. That, that, that's not intended. It's fun, but it shouldn't be legal. And it also kind of bugs me that Zero was advertised to have this cool assassin sword that he slices through enemies with. And then when they released Borderlands 2, he didn't actually have like a dedicated sword melee weapon. Which I know is, I guess you could just fault me for that, but I mean, come on, bro. He had this insanely sick looking assassin sword. And then in game, it was just this default melee animation. I, I just, I, I got a personal bias on that one. But moving on into the number nine spot, what beats out Zero? Who do I enjoy playing more than Zero? It has to be the doppelganger from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, I don't really have much against this character. I'm not going to sit here and make it out like this is a bad character, that it has tons of flaws. It's just simply the case of I think the characters in front of this one are more fun to play. I will say, however, that one of the most annoying parts of Timothy in Borderlands the pre-sequel is the voice lines which he does not stop repeating constantly. They are so incredibly annoying. I mean, that's about all I have to say about Timothy on the negative side. Apart from that, I just think the ones in front of Timothy are a little bit better. But yeah, that's my pick for number 9. Now, coming in at number 8 from Borderlands 3, is it going to be Zane? Is it going to be Moe's? Yes, it's going to be Moe's. Moe's in Borderlands 3 is a character which at launch I thought was the most boring in the game. However, with the release of the purple skill trees and getting the Iron Cub action skill, I finally began to enjoy Moe's. I love her gameplay, I love watching my little Iron Cub run around with its railguns blasting everyone's heads off. I really enjoy using Moe's. Would I enjoy Moe's as much if she didn't have so much mayhem scaling? I don't know. But that's completely irrelevant, and the point here is that I enjoy Moe's in Borderlands 3 a lot more now than I used to. But I don't enjoy her as much as my next pick, which is number 7, also known as Nisha from the pre-sequel. Now, I know in the pre-sequel there are a lot of simps over Nisha who believe she is the cream of the crop, the most fun Vault Hunter in the game, the most awesome Vault Hunter ever, but I have two pieces of information which I'd like to discuss which bring her down in my opinion. 
The first one is I do not enjoy that she gets to dual wield pistols. You will call me crazy for this, but it is how I feel and I want to make it clear that it's not me saying I don't find it fun to dual wield pistols. I just don't think we should have reused the gun zerking gimmick from Borderlands 2. This also brings me to her action skill where she quite literally gets aimbot. Is it fun? Hell yeah, dog. This is some of the most fun you can have in Borderlands, period. It's about what you would expect from a typical looter shooter action skill for a character, you know, rather than something creative and innovative. So that's why I've got Nisha where she's at right now. And with that being said, let's move on to the number six spot. Who got snubbed out of number five? Who did not make it into number five? Well, we already know that Borderlands 1 didn't make it into the top 20, and that means there's only really one franchise entry which didn't make it into number five, and it's Borderlands 3, because my number six spot is Zane the Operative. I really enjoy playing Zane in Borderlands 3. But sadly, the green tree of Zane is just very, very underwhelming. And I don't really enjoy it at all. In addition to that, I don't play with Zane's clone enough. I would like to play with Zane's clone a little more. But I kind of wish that Zane's clone had more of a mind of its own and would move around and do its own thing. I don't find it as fun as I would have hoped to. And in addition to that, I also, like, never use the Sentinel drone on Zane when I feel like I really, really should be doing that. But I just don't do that, and that makes me sad that I don't do that. So I'm really sorry, Zane, but you have to be at number 6. You are a very, very fun Vault Hunter to use, but man, I just wish that you had got that little face tunnel or whatever it was. What, what was the, the teleporting thing they were going to give to Zane? Oh, it was the reality tunnel. That's what it was going to be called. Yeah, if they give him the reality tunnel, maybe he'd be a little bit higher. But sadly, Zane, no dashing is no bueno. Now, making it into the number five spot, sitting right at the top, is going to be Maya from Borderlands 2. I love this character so much and I would do anything for Gearbox to give us one final update to Borderlands 2 where they give us long hair Maya. That's what I'm all about dog, maybe I'll make a mod for it myself. Now that we have model replacement in Borderlands 2 I guess technically anything's possible. But Maya is a very very fun Vault Hunter to play in Borderlands 2 and I don't have much more to say about her. <laughs> like I mean that's about it, she's very very fun. I love her action skill, I think Phase Lock is probably one of if not the coolest action skills in the franchise. I enjoy her gameplay loop as well, I enjoy using Cloud Kill on Maya, I enjoy doing Breakneck Banshee on Maya, and uh, and so many other different builds, and there's, there's just so much to do on Maya, and I really, really enjoy her. I also destroyed the dragons with a melee build on her, which is uh, pretty neat. But someone who's just a little more cool than Maya, in my opinion, is another pre-sequel entry at number 4, and it's none other than Aurelia the Baroness. Now, before Aurelia was in Borderlands 3 as an extremely annoying and unneeded character within the story, she was introduced in the pre-sequel. Lady Hammerlock, the sister of Sir Hammerlock, and oh my god, why is this not even a siren? Just looking at what her action skill does, it makes me feel like she should be a siren. Now, I understand the lore and I understand why she's not one and how her action skill works. But damn, this is so cool. Like, imagine if we had an ice elemental siren in the franchise. That would be so freaking cool to me. I love using Aurelia's action skill to freeze literally everything if you've been looking for like the true definitive cryo experience in borderlands first of all you should be playing the pre-sequel second of all you should be playing aurelia because she's quite literally the cryo vault hunter and she has a ton of skills for sniping she's like a mix between like zero and and uh, uh, maybe amara i don't know who's like an, another really cool cryo character but aurelia is so much fun and i think i've done like three playthroughs on her to level 70 she is just so freaking cool man but someone who is just way cooler than Aurelia, and I don't think enough people realize how good this Vault Hunter is, it's none other than my boy. Can I get a drum roll, please? It's been a while since we've done this on the channel. We're bringing back the gimmick here. We're like rehashing content in present day. Get ready, baby, because it's none other than Wilhelm the Enforcer. Now, my boy Skillhelm has been out of the spotlight for some time now, but all the OGs know if you've genuinely gone in and played the pre-sequel, that Skillhelm is actually an incredibly cool 
Vault Hunter. So cool that they quite literally copied skills from Wilhelm over to Zane in Borderlands 3. Look it up, that is not a fake claim, that is real news baby. They actually copied Wilhelm's skills into Borderlands 3 and that's just, that's the cultural impact this Vault Hunter has on the franchise. Is Wilhelm the number one Vault Hunter of all time? No, I don't think so and I would pick other Vault Hunters over Wilhelm in the franchise as you're going to find it in the number two and one spot but to be number three is an achievement of its own. Wilhelm blasting people with a shoulder laser, getting cybernetic upgrades, being able to robo punch people. Bro, he gets two drones to like come, come on. How, how can you not look at this Vault Hunter and think wow, peak. That is how I feel about Wilhelm. There is no other Vault Hunter more deserving of the number three spot, but there are Vault Hunters that are more deserving of the two and one spot, so let's get right into them. Now, if you've been paying attention up until this point, you'll be well aware that from here on out, there are only two other choices we can make, and you probably know who it's going to be between. One of them is a male, and one of them is a female. And in our case here, the number two spot, it is a tough decision to make, but I think it's got to go to the male in this case. It's got to go to Salvador the Gunzerker. I feel so bad for putting Salvador in at the number two spot, snubbing my boy. Because I knew uh, for a little history lesson here, a little story time with Epic, when Borderlands 1 ended and I beat Robot Revolution, I knew we would get a Borderlands 2. I was telling all my friends it was going to happen and nobody listened to me. And then one day, an article came out showcasing an image of Salvador, saying that there would be this small dude in Borderlands 2 who could gun zerk and dual wield any item in the game. What? A Vault Hunter that can hold two items, two rocket launchers, two assault rifles. This today probably is the coolest idea for a Vault Hunter ever made and I don't think they've ever topped it since. I don't think anything in the franchise, and I will say this on record, is remotely as cool as the idea as a strong, small, hulking beast wielding two assault rifles, wielding two affinities, two maggies, two slaggers. This is probably the coolest idea to date and that is why I put Salvador in at number two. It isn't even because of money shot or anything else like that. It is purely because of the concept of this Vault Hunter and also how freaking fun it is to play Salvador. If you want Salvador at number one instead of my number one pick, I don't blame you. But I just think Salvador only slightly so gets snubbed out in this list. Now, coming in at number one, there is only one more spot and it is deserving of this spot if I do say so myself. It has to be, in my opinion, the most fun Vault Hunter to play in the franchise and it is Athena the Gladiator from Borderlands the pre-sequel. I'm not even going to defend Athena here if you disagree with me. I just think you should go and play Borderlands the pre-sequel and play a playthrough of Athena if you haven't already. This is such a fun Vault Hunter to play. I don't know if I've had a better time with a character in Borderlands than I have with Athena. She was the character I picked on my first pre-sequel playthrough and I fell in love with the game and with her. I know that the revisionist will try to tell you that pre-sequel is a terrible Borderlands game, but despite pre-sequel's issues at launch, it was incredibly fun, not to mention the events they did in-game as well and all of the cool easter eggs in the pre-sequel. I really think it's time that we bring the pre-sequel back to life, that we do a resuscitation of the pre-sequel in this community, because that game is absolutely peak, and Athena is peak gameplay design. Her Aspis shield is so incredibly cool, you basically feel like Captain America, and you actually feel like a legitimate berserker, unlike Brick at the polar opposite end of this list, because you get to taunt enemies, letting them shoot your shield, while you just sit there smiling at them, knowing what awaits them. And it is just so incredibly satisfying and I can't even put it into words how much I really, really like Athena and how insulting it is that they stuck her character model into new tales, tarnishing her legacy forever. But we're going to wreck on that. We, we, we can just pretend that didn't happen. Athena, I love you. 
I wish you would return one day. Maybe you'll come back in Borderlands 4, hopefully not as a generic NPC and actually as a playable character again. That would be pretty cool. I'd love to see Athena V2 in Borderlands 4. Why not? Athena, my love, I hope we meet again one day and you are deserving of my number one spot. But let me know what you guys think. What is your list going to look like? Put it in the comment section down below and let me know. Also, this is going to be super sick because these videos are like dislike farming simulators. And I know that you want to dislike the video. So let's see if we can hit 1000 dislikes on the video. That would be pretty poggers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good day. And hopefully we get more peak vault hunters in Borderlands 4.